And today we're going to be talking about relationships. And I do know this, that you were created to have healthy relationships. But that seems like it's so hard. And I think it's hard because I, we probably think it should just come naturally to us. But the reality is relationships don't come naturally. We got to work on them. And maybe that's why there's so much separation and divorce because we thought it should be easier than it's turned out. I, maybe we're underestimating the effort or the education or the skill we must develop to have really good relationships. I got good news for every single person here. You can have healthy relationships because relationships are a skill. Say with me, they are a skill. It's something that we could learn if we practice the right habits. Not only can we learn it, we can be empowered by God's love as we receive Christ into our lives. We receive the Holy Spirit. And I want you, it's the Spirit of God that gives us the opportunity or the power to forgive like God, be kind like God, be patient like God. Every believer has the potential to be godly. God's a master in relationships. So today we're going to learn from the master. We're going to learn from the word. And this is the reality. What you're going to learn today, no university is going to teach you. What you're going to learn today, if you practice it and you get the information, you'll be able to share this information in your workplace, with your family, with your friends. And this is what's going to happen. You can help them develop some skill. This stuff is really, really good. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about relationships. And I'm going to also give you 10 keys to being a good listener today. So you're going to write these things out. We're going to practice it. Of course, most of the stuff that we're looking at, we've never been taught. And then we're going to say like, whoa, I didn't realize that's how you listen or that's how you communicate. We're going to, now we're going to be in this series three weeks. I'm going to say three weeks. So today we're going to cover a skill. Next Sunday, we're going to cover another skill. And then the third Sunday, we're going to cover a skill. Now it comes as a package. You, you don't want, you want to have all three and get the complete teaching. So this is what I'm asking you to do. Commit for the next three weeks to be here and get skilled in relationships. Also, commit to bring somebody with you. I really believe this. This is the perfect opportunity to bring someone. Every sing, you, This is how easy it's going to be. Hey, come to our church this Sunday. We're going to be talking about relationships. And we're going to get some skills to have healthy relationships. Who wouldn't come to that? It's a really easy invite. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to invite your friends next week. Let's double, come on, our attendance by every one of us bringing one person with us and bring them to this relationship seminar for the next three weeks. Let's pray. Father, I'm asking you to speak through me today. I need your help, Holy Spirit. Because without your help, this is just a talk. We don't want to talk. We want you to speak to us. We want revelation. We want understanding. So I ask you right now to speak to us clearly. And we open our hearts to receive your word today. We want to understand it so we can apply it, so we can start getting your results. Father, and I lift up every relationship that's here, marriages that are struggling and going through difficulties. I thank you, Lord, that they don't have a marriage problem. They have an application problem. And I just ask you today, Lord, to show us what we need to stop doing and start doing to make our relationships what they should be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. You may be seated. And we're getting our teaching from the book of James, and we're in the book of James. We're going verse by verse, and right now we're in James chapter 1, verse 19. Let's take a look at this. Now, James, um, for some of you who don't know, who is James? James was the brother of Jesus Christ. He became a, a believer after Jesus resurrected from the dead, and then he became a pastor of the Jerusalem church. And then what James started 
do, he wrote this book with just a whole bunch of wisdom. He goes from one subject to another subject to another subject. And really what he's writing down is a letter to Christians and he's letting them know this is how we should be living. So this is a book on Christian living. So now he goes into relationships. And this is what James says. He said, understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear. And that means be a cure, careful and thoughtful listener. Slow to speak, a speaker of carefully chosen words and slow to anger. Be patient, reflective, and forgiven. This scripture identifies three skills that I can see. And these are going to be the three skills that we're going to be discussing in the next three weeks. The first skill is listening skills. He says, be quick to hear or quick to listen. That word quick just means ready. Say it with me, ready. That means be a, an alert, intentional listener. Be ready not to speak. Be ready to listen. So many of us take breaks in a conversation that we're not speaking only because we're just waiting and we're thinking about the next thing we're going to say. We're not taking a break because we want to understand or listen. We're just taking a break to determine what's the next thing we're ready to say. Most conversations are really one-way conversations. That means I just want to communicate to you and I want you to listen. And the other person saying, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I want to communicate to you and I want you to listen. But what happens, both people are not listening. Skill number two that we're going to cover next week, he says slow to speak. So next week we're going to be covering communication skills. So we're going to learn how to listen today. And then next week we're going to learn how to talk to each other. And skill number three, he said be slow to anger, be forgiven. So the third week, we're going to learn forgiven skills. Say it with me, forgiven skills. So um, when we're talking about listening, I want to give you some quotes before I give you some keys. And, and one of the quotes that I thought was really interesting, it said this, one of the most sincere forms of respect is actually listening to what another has to say. Have you ever been speaking to someone and they're just like ignoring you? Maybe your children. Have you ever, you're, you're saying something, they're just like not paying attention. And you'll, you'll even say something like this. You better respect me. You don't know who I am. I'm your mama. I brought you in this world. I'll take you out. But I, but I think we're almost offended when we're talking to someone and they're just not paying attention. They're not in a moment. But if you really want to show respect and honor to someone truly engage and listen. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. That's a great quote. But the second quote I want to just mention is, I remind myself every morning, this is what Larry King that said this, nothing I say this day will teach me anything. So if I'm going to learn, I must do it by listening. Do you know that when you're talking, you're not learning? When you're talking, all you're, ex are, all you're being exposed to is your own knowledge. For you to learn, you must do this. Listen to someone that knows more than you. Is there anybody wants to learn? I want to learn. So this is what we're going to do in these next few weeks. We're here to learn. I'm going to dive right into this, and I'm going to give you 10 keys to being a skilled listener. These are really fun. Number one, when you're listening, that, what I'm going to show you is how to listen to one another. The second part of this teaching today is how to listen to God. This is how to listen to one another. The second part is how to listen to God. Skill, I mean, key number one, face the speaker and maintain eye contact. Eliminate all distractions. Turn off your phones your TV, or any other potential interruptions. We must give our undivided attention. 
We used to tell kids, stop, look, and listen when, we're, when they were crossing the street. You just can't cross the street. You got to stop, look both ways, and maybe listen to what's going on around you. But I think maybe we need to start saying that in our communication. It's time to stop, look the person in the eye, and listen. Uh, this, this week, I took my daughters to go, well, yesterday, I took my daughters to go eat some sushi. And my daughters were, I mean, they ate a little sushi in their life, but I took them to eat all-you-can-eat sushi. And I took them there, and, and you know what they brought? They brought their phones, and sure, so did I. So while we're eating or beginning the process, one of my daughters is texting, and another daughter's taking pictures of the food and sending it to her friends. Right? But there's no communication really at that table because we're communicating with everyone else that's not at that table. So I, I just decided, let's take our phones and let's just put them aside in a little pile and let's engage in this moment. We're going to have to learn when someone's speaking, give them the respect and honor they deserve and stop everything. Stop washing the dishes put down your homework, put down everything you're doing, and then look the person in the eye. Wow. That's kind of hard because we're so busy. Have you ever listened like this? They're saying something and you keep on doing what you're doing. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Are you done yet? Uh-uh, uh And then we wonder why our relationships aren't healthy because we have no relationship or listening etiquette. You guys got that? Skill number two, or key number two, lean toward the speaker and listen attentively. I want you right now, lean a little bit in. Come on, just lean it, just a little bit in. And you know what this is saying? It's a posture, and this posture is saying, I don't want to miss a word of what you're saying because this word can change my life and my future and my relationships. I want to get every single word. I want to learn it so I could apply it, so I could teach it, so I could get the results of it. I want to become a relationship master. What, 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 what are you saying? Say it with me. Lean in. Lean in. In Proverbs 4.20, it says this. My child, pay attention to what I say. The scripture saying that you could be listening and not pay attention. Listen carefully to my words. So that means that you could listen or hear and not listen with attentiveness or carefully to make sure you understand. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep in your heart. Number three key. Take thorough notes. Say it with me. Take thorough notes. Now, you could take it on your phone. I also recommend do this this week. Get a, get a notebook and a pen and start writing down what you're learning because we have a saying here, what you write down, you own, and what you teach others, you master. There's a lot of work put into a teaching like this, a lot of research put into a teaching like this. Why not get it so you could live it and get the results of it? This can save, save you from a lot of pain. This can save you from, come on, this can save you from a divorce. This can save you from a broken marriage. This can save you from a broken heart. It will just learn how to have healthy and skilled relationships. Say, take thorough notes. After all, the Bible was written by thorough note takers. Take some, there was, a, there was a, 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 a illustration or a story I heard this week and, and they were describing, um, this wife was saying, my husband originally we got married would get on my nerves. And she said, he'd get on my nerves because every time I spoke, he'd get a note paper and just start writing down everything I said. And she said, stop doing it, it's not that serious. He said, but I don't want to miss anything that you said. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. And when she understood that her husband was just listening attentively, she goes, oh, okay. Wouldn't it be great 
that every time, husbands, you, you spoke, your wife just came with a note paper, like, give me the wisdom. And then while you're speaking, she goes like, wow, that's deep. How many men would love that? Like, get your note paper. I'm ready to drop some wisdom bombs right now. But you know what that shows is respect and honor. Once in a while, I'll get in a teaching atmosphere, even apart from church, and people will come with a note paper, and they'll come with a book, and they'll write down every single thing I'm saying, and then they'll record it because they don't want to miss a word. And this is the idea, the effort that you put in in your learning is the results going to determine the results you're going to get in your life. Could it be that you want great results, but you're a lazy learner? An LL, Cool J. Number four skill or, or key, keep an open mind. Listen without judging, blaming. Listen without jumping to conclusions and name calling. We cannot be skilled listeners if we're offended listeners, critical listeners, skeptical listeners, doubtful listeners, or blaming listeners. We don't want to say stuff like this while the person's speaking. Why'd you say something so stupid? That was the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And then we wonder why there's not good communication and you wonder why your wife threw a pan at you. What? The idea is you, want, you don't want to be an offended listener. Be careful that you don't get offended and miss the wisdom. Be careful that you don't get offended with your boss and your boss has a promotion that he's ready to give you, but he's giving you instructions and you can't receive it because you got offended because they, they promoted someone else last time other than you. You were next, but this is what happened. Your attitude disqualified you. Wouldn't it be crazy that your breakthrough is right here and you get offended with the speakers? You get offended with your teachers? You get offended with your mothers and fathers? Could it be that the devil has you tricked and he has you offended with every single teacher and every person that could give you wisdom and you're sitting in church angry and upset because you're an offended listener? Listen with an open mind. Say it with me. Listen with a what? Forgive everybody. Let it go and learn and grow. Number five, listen with empathy. Try to feel what the speaker is feeling. Empathy is the, heart of a good, is the heart of a good listener. Empathy means this, is you have put yourself in another person's place and allow yourself to feel what it is like to be them for that moment. Be an empathetic listener. Now, this is important. You're not mature when you're tuned into your own feelings. Like, this is how I feel. You become mature when you're tuned in to how other people feel. Now, this is what it's saying. Don't just listen to what they're saying. Feel it. Get it. I understand how you can feel the way you feel. I'm not discounting your feelings. I understand. I put myself in your shoes for this moment. Listen with empathy, not judgment, not being critical. Put yourself in their shoes. Think about the words that you're ready to say. If you were in their shoes, how would you feel? If they're opening up their heart to you, and you don't feel it, that's why you could understand what someone says and they still not convinced that you get it because you understood the content, but you didn't understand the, the depth of the feelings that were there. Hmm. Number six, give the speaker regular feedback. So when, when the speaker speaking, this is how you get feedback. You're looking them in the eye and you, you say something like this. Mm, wow. Whoa, that's so true. You're right. Amen. 
Hallelujah. In church, you might even clap. Someone say amen. amen. Come on, just let me know that you're with me, that you're tracking with me, that you understand I'm receiving this. I'm receiving this word for me. I'm, you're blowing my mind. And the more enthusiastic you are as a listener, the more you're going to receive. That's why we're not a quiet church. Come on, we're a church that once in a while when the speaker's speaking and there's something rising up on you and you get it, you might even stand up and just start giving God a clap because I am receiving this word. This word is for me. I needed this key for my breakthrough. Now, don't do this at home. Your husband starts speaking, you're like, hallelujah. That would be kind of weird. Or say, son, preacher, preacher. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. <laughs> but in a church setting or a learning setting, there's nothing wrong with saying, I received that. Amen. Come on, let that happen in my life. That's my breakthrough. I'm going to go ahead and celebrate my growth. <laughs> Participate. Participate. Um, the other, number seven, don't interrupt them. Wait your turn. It is easy to tune people out or just focus on what we're ready to say while they're speaking. Now, once you get this interruption, interrupting them while they're speaking says this, I'm more important than you are when you interrupt them. You're also saying, I really don't care what you think. Or it's saying something like this, this isn't a conversation, it's an argument, and I'm going to win. Could it be that's going on in our mind? Someone's speaking, they're sharing, and you're interrupting them every second. Matter of fact, I already know what you're going to say. You don't even need to say it. This is what you're going to say. No, I wasn't going to say that. Yeah, you were. That's why you're lying right now. Listen. Listen without interrupting. It's going to be hard because some of you guys have so much to say. And you thought communication was you just communicating, but now you're realizing that the most important skill you could ever have a, as a, in a relationship is listening. And the old saying is, that's why you got two ears and one mouth. Do twice as much listening than you do speaking. Don't interrupt them. Number eight, practice the discipline of keeping your mouth shut or less speaking and more listening. A lot of trouble that we have in relationships is a result of words we shouldn't have said or just talking too much. Speaking less is a discipline we can learn and practice. We have not, and I want you to guess, we have not earned the right to speak until we've understood what they said. You don't have a right to move on in the conversation until you understand what your spouse said, what your friend said, what your boss said, what your brother-in-law said, what your sister said, what your hater said. Just slow down and understand it. I remember, I remember, I remember one day uh, when I was in a car business, I, I learned the business really fast and I was really good at it because I learned really fast. I, I just listened and I learned and I wrote it down and then I applied it. And I saw the people that were succeeding and I would just do exactly what they did and I would get the results because I was just a fast learner when it came to just looking at people. See, there was, there was a pattern of success, a walk of success. I, I knew it. And, but I had a boss that would scream all the time and that was his form of communication, screaming and cussing. And in the car business, that's like, I don't know if it is now, but it was normal. Like every manager would scream and cuss you out. And I remember some, some, some salespeople, some other man, assistant manager would get all upset and angry. And I remember one day, I 
my team was a broke all the records. We're the number one store in organ, the number one team in the organization. We sold a lot of cars that month. We did really good. And that one boss came in screaming, top of his lungs, like we messed up. And I already knew I'm a good listener. So what I'm going to do is listen to the content and throw out the noise. So I told my team, I go, guys, all he's saying is we got to follow up on the customers. That's all. Forget about all the rest of the stuff. That's all he was saying. And in 10 minutes, he's not going to be mad anymore. Don't get all emotional. Let's just learn how to listen to what he was saying. Could it be that we're caught up in the emotion and we've forgotten about the content? Come on, let's get the content. Listen more, speak less. Now, number nine, when listening to someone talk about a problem, refrain from giving solutions. Ask for permission to give solutions. They might just want to be heard. What I mean by that is someone's sharing a problem with you, right? They're sharing a problem with you, and you want to give them a solution. This is what we should do. Hear them out, and if you want to give them a solution, ask them. Do you mind if I share some insight on what you just told me? Because I was in a similar situation, and I learned a lot from it, and maybe what I could share with you can help you. And they're going to say, you know what they're all going to say? Well, yes. For sure. And then you share your solution. But, but don't be so quick to interrupt them and just give them a solution because they might just want to be what? They just want to be heard. And the last one, last one. Summarize. Say it with me, summarize. At the end of every conversation in which information is exchanged, conclude in summary statements. A summary statement includes agreements, obligations, responsibilities, action plans, apologies, and repeating what was said. A summary statement shows that we were truly listening. Now, me and my wife, we sometimes we have communication problems with the summary statements. Like I'm trying to say something, and this is what I want, a summary statement back. What do you mean by that is I want her to understand what I said. So I'll say something like this. What did I say? And she'll say, I heard what you said. I get it. And then I go, oh, no, no, no. This is what I said. I'll go over and then, and then we'll go in a circle. You're going to say it again? Well, yeah, I'm going to say it again because I'm not sure you got it. So and then... It could get to the point I could start raising my voice because maybe the tone, the tone is not loud enough. <laughs> and then she'll say something. Why are you screaming? I heard you the first time. But I just want to make sure you understand what I'm saying because once I know you understand what I'm saying, we're done. So this is what I want to hear. I want to hear, Marco, I totally understand what you just said. What you said was, you don't want me correcting you in front of people because it makes you feel stupid. <laughs> because you are stupid. No, just kidding. <laughs> this was a real conversation we had the other day because she'll sometimes correct me on stuff that don't matter in front of people like, you know, we, we, we usually put our temperature on our thermostat right around 72. She goes, no, 75. 75. And I'm like, three degrees don't make a difference. It wasn't the point. We just put the, the, we just put the thermostat on. That's all I was trying to say. So I remember a Friday when this happened. She goes, no, it wasn't a Friday. It was a Thursday. Liar. I'm like, okay, it was a Thursday, okay? I'm sorry, Lisa, for getting this information so off. It was 10 years ago. <laughs> so we have conversations like that. So the summary statement would be, Marco, I totally understand. I apologize for, for making you look stupid in front of people by correcting you. Or it might be a conversation this way. She goes, Marco, um, would you please take out the trash? Because leaving the trash in the kitchen 
makes the kitchen smell like trash. And when we have guests over, it's kind of embarrassing. Now, communicating says, honey, I totally understand. Why don't you take out the trash? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, no, that's not good communication. She, it wasn't she was trying to get herself to take out the trash. Well, you got two arms like me. You could take out the trash. This is a free country. And women's rights. People in third world countries, they be working the fields and they're having their babies right there while they're working the fields and you can't take out a little trash. You need me. I, I mean, no, that's not good communication. But good communication is saying, honey, I totally understand. What you're saying is, is you want the trash out because when you have guests over, it's kind of embarrassing. It smells really bad. And I'll make sure that I'll take out the trash every day so you don't have to deal with that smell. I got it. Someone say summary statement. Okay, so now I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you three things the Bible says about listening really fast. And now we talked about, we talked about three, 10 keys to communicating with each or listening to one another and developing the skill of listening. And I'll tell you three things that the Bible says about listening. And really all it says is three things. Number one, listen to understand. We don't listen to criticize, to argue, to give us time to think about what we're going to say. We listen to understand God and others. Say it with me. Listen to understand. Without, without understanding that there's no growth, there's no breakthrough, there's no building of relationship, there's no provision, there's no salvation, there are miracles. Only those that are quick to listen understand the word and see the results or the harvest of the word. Look, at, um, look what Jesus said about listening in Mark chapter 7, verse 14. He says, Jesus called to the crowd, to come and hear. And he says, all of you listen, he said, and try to understand. He goes, I'm ready to speak, but I want you to right now, before I say anything, I want you to get ready. Put your listening ears on. And while I'm speaking, I want you to be so focused on this one thing that while I'm speaking, you're hearing to get knowledge, to learn, and gain understanding. Now, once you develop the skill of learning, understanding, there's no limits of what you should accomplish in life. The Bible says this, my people perish not because they can't succeed, they can't overcome, they don't have the ability, they don't have the resources, they, they perish or they're destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge or understanding. Listening to understand is a skill. You got to be careful because while you're le- listening, there's a battle in your mind about all, about all kinds of other thoughts. Some people, every time the word of God is spoken, they're thinking about going to the bathroom. What are you thinking right now? I got to go pee-pee? It's like a pee-pee demon. I'm just kidding. It's a thought that comes that doesn't allow you to be in the moment, learn, and grow. You got to resist everything that will stop you from being a learner, a, a, a listener that gets understanding. I'm focused. I'm here to get some breakthroughs, some information, some wisdom for the rest of my life. I'm not wasting a Sunday. I'm here to learn. Look at Mark 4. It says this. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. The scripture is saying you could have ears but not understand or listen to anything. Have you ever done that with your kids? They hear you, but they didn't listen to you. They don't understand what you said. Let's be in the house of God. He says, hear us here, let him hear. He said, listen and understand. Someone say, understand. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. Pay, Pay what? To what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you'll be given and you receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, 
Even the little understanding they have will be taken away from them. I want you to get this. When you become a focused listener, understanding what's being said, this is what's going to happen. God's going to give you more revelation, more wisdom, more insight. You're going to become wiser and smarter. And what God says to those that are keen listeners, that gain understanding, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them more understanding, more wisdom, more revelation. And you know what that means? You have more value to give others. Someone say value. So that means when I study the word, all kinds of things just start popping up. Like, bah, 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 bah. I could sit there for an hour and just get revelation after revelation after revelation, understanding after understanding after understanding because I've developed the skill of being a focused listener and my goal is to gain understanding. You guys understand that? You understand what I'm saying, right? But to those... Check this out. That listen or hear, but don't understand is what he's saying. Even the little understanding they have is going to be taken away from them. You know what this scripture is actually saying? That you could become smarter or you could become dumber. If you're, if you're in a church and you're not learning and you're not understanding, this is what could happen 10 years from now. You could be farther behind than you were when you first started. Because you develop a habit of not understanding, not paying attention, and that means you're not growing. Whoa, that's crazy, All right? Number two, this is what the Bible says about listening. Listen to build faith. Say it with me, listen to build faith. Now, the most important asset that you have as a Christian is faith in God. And it only comes through listening to the word of God. Every word of God is a seed that has potential to produce a spiritual, physical harvest. A harvest of joy, of peace, eternal life, healing, restoration, freedom, love, success, prosperity, purpose, salvation, breakthrough, and, so, and on and on. Every word has a potential to produce miracles in your life. But you cannot, I want you to get this. Every seed needs to be planted in a believing heart. Someone say a believing heart. So how do you get a heart that's full of faith? Only one way. It's through listening to the word of God. We need to have more word exposure so we have more faith. I wake up every morning. Every morning. Saints routine. I put on some preaching here in the word. Here in the word. Next thing, I put on some worship, praising God. Next thing I do is pray and then I study the word. Every morning is my same routine. You know what I'm doing? I'm building my faith because every single thing that God wants to do in my life has to be in a heart. The seed is good. But the heart has to be full of faith to produce the results of the word. The most important asset you can receive through listening is, is, is faith. Someone said, get faith. Look at this. In Romans 10, 17, it says, consequently, faith results from listening. And listening results through the word of the Messiah. So how do you get faith? By listening to the what? Word, word. See, everything we receive from God, we receive through hearing and believing. Someone say, hearing and what? The more you hear, the bigger your faith becomes, and the more of God's results you could have in your life. There's not a problem with God. There's a problem with our faith. How many want to have bigger faith? I need bigger faith. That means I need to learn how to hear. And receive, faith comes by hearing and listening to the word of God. Look at Romans 4, 17. It says this. That is what the scriptures mean when God told him. I have made you the father of many nations. In this scripture, we have a man that's around, he's in, in his 90s. And God's telling him, he hasn't had a, he hasn't had a, him and his wife have not had a son. And God's telling him, he's speaking. Someone say speaking. Before God does anything, he speaks it. 
And then a man believes it and receives it, and then it becomes to pass. That's the pattern. God speaks it, a man understands it, believes it, receives it, and it comes to pass. There's no other way to get anything from God than hearing the Word of God, believing the Word of God, receiving the Word of God, and you get the results of the Word of God. So look at the Scripture. So God told him, you're going to be a father of many nations. That means you're going to have a lot of children. This happened because Abraham believed. Why did it happen? And how did he believe? What did he believe in? What God told him. What did he believe in? And the last Last thing the Bible talks about, what it says about listening, is listen to apply. Say it with me. Listen to apply. So you listen to understand, you listen to build faith, and you listen to apply. I was talking to someone today, and, and they texted me early this morning, and they said this, Pastor Marco, I want you to mentor me one-on-one. -on -one. So I text them right back, come to church. Come to church. He texts me back with something like this. Um, how can I learn from you in a preaching if I can't learn from you one-on-one, -on -one, close? And I told him this, I only coach the coachable. The Word of God says, do not forsake the assembling of one another. Do not develop the habit of not showing up for worship as some people have the habit of doing. And I told him, if I was a basketball coach and I wanted you to become, you want to become better at free throws, I would give you instruction. And I would say something like this. I want you to do 100 free throws before every day before you show up to practice. And if you did that, I would give you more instruction. But if I'm giving you instruction and you're not following it, this is what I'm saying, you're not coachable. And when you're not coachable, this is what happens, you don't get the results of the coaching. Right now, the Holy Spirit is coaching us on how to do relationships. But we don't listen just to listen, to understand. We listen to understand, to believe, and apply. Someone say apply. And I'm going to read just two scriptures to end it. James 1.22, it says this, but prove yourselves to be doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts, and not merely listeners obeying the precepts, who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning, deluding yourself by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. What he's saying is, do not get to the point that you talk yourself out of obeying the word. Be one of those people that when you hear it, no matter how hard it is, you immediately apply it so you can start getting results. How many want to start getting results? I'm going to give you one result that you can get by obeying the word of God. This is a cool result. You could get healed from depression. Does anybody want peace and joy? Look what the Bible says. This is a great scripture. And it says, but he said, bless, happy, and to be envied, rather, are those who hear, are those who what? Hear the word of God and obey it and practice it. In Philippians 4, 9, it says, keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Wow. Could it be we don't have a depression problem? We have an obedience problem. Because this is what God is saying. If you would obey me, you'd be happy. If you would practice my word, you'd have some peace. And you're asking the doctor to fix a spiritual problem. So no matter what pill they give you, the depression, the lack of peace is still there. But there's a sure cure for depression. And that's hearing the word of God, obeying the word of God. And God says, I promise you, in my word, it's laced with joy and peace. There's drugs laced with all kinds of stuff. But the word of God is laced with joy and peace. Did he learn something today? Let's all stand up. You guys are awesome crowd.
Come on, did we learn about relationships a little bit today? We got a lot of work to do. I'm going to dismiss you in just a second. You guys are an amazing crowd. So now, you know, as we're, we're at this point, we learn the word to apply. Someone said, we learn the word to what? No one's going to get into heaven or see transformation without hearing a word, believing a word, and taking action on it. Could it be that God is saying today, I'll change your life. I'll change your emotions. I'll change your relationships. I'll change you. All I need you to do is just understand what I told you and take some action. And there's a scripture that says this. This is so amazing by listening to the word of God. It says, is that he who believes has eternal life. Believe in? Believe in what? What you're hearing. What God wants to do is give you a new life. There's nothing here you, anyone's ever done that cannot be forgiven. If you don't like the way your relationships are going, it's okay. We could say this, I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm done. Forgive me, Lord. I'm tired for hogging the conversation, rolling my eyes. I'm tired for not looking people in the eye when, I, when they're speaking to me. A distracted listener. I am, ty- I am tired of interrupting people. I, I'm just tired of being a critical listener, a judgmental listener, a blaming listener. I am tired of name calling. I'm done. I want change. Now, you know what's so awesome? When you realize you need change, God will help you make the change. Next week, we're going to be talking about about be slow to speak, and we're going to be talking about what to say. We're we're talking about how to listen, and next we're going to talk about what to say. After you listen, what do I say? And make sure the right words are coming out of your life so you can start getting the right results. Your words are seeds. What you throw out there is going to come back to you. And could it be that right now what's coming back to us is more pain, more anger, more hurt, because that's what's coming out of our mouths. And then we wonder, well, it just seems like I'm in the same cycle because your conversations are the same. Your skills that you're applying are the same skills that your mama taught you. You said, you said this, I'll never want to be like my mama. You're just like her. You communicate just like her. You know why? That's what you got taught. And you're a Christian, you just don't know better. It's like the old saying, forgive them for knowing not what they do. You have to learn that prayer with others too. You know now, this message is not for you to beat other people over the head. Remember, point number seven. It's for you, personally. It's personal application, not other application. It's for me. But if you're saying today, you know, Pastor, I want to be forgiven. It's the biggest thing that could ever happen in your life. You've done wrong, I've done wrong. But do you know that God loves you so much? He don't look at you as a critical thinker. He looks at you and he says, there's potential. I love him. I love her. They're amazing. And you might say, man, I've messed up. So what? Everybody's messed up. You can be forgiven. But you know what you have to do is receive. The Bible says this. If you confess your sins, that you, it just means you admit you sin. God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness and give you new life. So no matter if you're in this room and say, man, I don't know, I need to be forgiven, man. I've done some stuff to my wife, to people. I've said some crazy stuff. I want to be forgiven. That's the beginning of change. We're not here to change your neighbor. You're here to ask God to change you. You can't repent for them. You can only repent for yourself like me. If your marriage is crazy, we got two crazy people usually. If you both repent of your craziness, maybe we got some sanity in the house. How many believe that? Come on. No, I'm not crazy. She's crazy. You married her. You must be crazy. Right? It's just the way it is. But, but we can be forgiven. Someone said we can be forgiven. Now, I want you to get this. No one's going to heaven without being forgiven. 
Heaven, heaven is not for a whole bunch of perfect goody two shoes in heaven. It's, it's for a whole bunch of people that have been forgiven. I just have to admit, I was loud and mean and arrogant and prideful. I've committed adultery, I've lusted, I've lied, I've cheated, stolen. I've done a lot of bad stuff. Forgive me, Lord. And you know what God will say? Of course I forgive you. But he doesn't just forgive you. He gives you his spirit. You know what that means? He fills you with his, his own spirit. I forgive you, and this is what he means. I transform you into a new person. I'm going to give you new abilities, new talents. I'm going to break the addiction. I'm going to heal you of your pain. You're truly going to have the power to live a new life. God wants to be so close to you. He wants to be inside of you. Wow. Greater is he that's in me than whatever I'm facing in the world. Man, you're missing something. If you know about Jesus and you don't have Jesus in you, you've not been forgiven, you don't have his spirit in you, you're missing the whole meaning of life. He forgives you, he empowers you, and then he gives you new life or eternal life. You know what that means? One day we're all gonna die. But when I stand before God, I'm going to heaven. I say, Pastor Mark, are you, you're go, for sure? You sure? You sure about that? I'm sure because I didn't save me. Jesus died on the cross. You know what that means? He paid the price for all the wrong I've done. He paid all. Some of you guys are cutting yourself. You're abusing yourself because you, you, you feel bad about how you, what you've done and, and you're trying to self-punish. And God says, you don't have to punish you. I let my son be punished for every wrong thing you've done so you could be forgiven. Receive forgiveness and start over. Come the way you are. But if you need forgiveness, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. Who's going to receive forgiveness? Those are raise their hand. Who's going to receive new life? Those are raise their hand. And the second group, you're saying, I'm in a relationship. I want to give my relationship to God. Because right now, a relationship is not working. And I want to give it to God. And I want to start doing relationships God's way. I'm tired of doing it my way. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to give my relationship to God. Or I want to be forgiven. One, today's your day. Two, when I say three, don't let nothing hold your hand down. This is taking action. Hear the word taking action. Only those that take action get results. It happened because they took action and they believed. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. So that's me. I want to be forgiven. I want to give my relationships to God. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Anybody else? I want those that raise their hand. I want you to do me one more big favor. Let's take some action. Will you give me the privilege and honor of praying with you? I want you to leave your seat, and I want you to come up here, and I just want to pray with you. And this is what's going to happen. A miracle is going to happen as you're taking action. You're leaving your old life in those seats, and you're saying, I want to start over. Let's give them a hand. Come on, church. That's someone's family being saved. That's someone's marriage being saved. That's someone's life being saved. Forgiveness, mercy, love. Give him a hand. Come on. Someone's, come on. This is someone's daughter. This is someone's mama. This is someone's uncle. This is someone's friend. Come on. This could be you. Be empathetic. Come on, church. Come on, church. Let's celebrate. Let's never be a dead church that doesn't love souls coming to Jesus. more workers up here too we need we need double the workers up here if you're a leader p12 leader come up here and let's pray with someone okay guys everyone that's up here give me your undivided attention you're going to receive forgiveness and there's a problem i've seen if you don't receive it right You're going to still have a guilt trip on you. And if you have a guilt trip on you, you just go back to the same mess. You're not going to earn this. I know, I know everybody else, they, they make it so hard for them to forgive you. They keep holding it. How do you know someone hasn't forgiven you? They keep bringing it up. Over and over and over. And you start thinking God's like that. 
And maybe you think God's like that because you're like that. You don't even forgive yourself. And you have a hard time forgiving others because you don't receive forgiveness. But God wants to forgive you so much, he sent his son to die for every, and suffer. Not for his sins, but for yours. It's love. God loves you. He wants to forgive you. Receive it today. You don't have to earn it. Receive it. Are you ready to let go of your way? Come on, are you ready to get let go of your way? Are you ready to let go of the depression? Are you ready to let go of the addiction? Are you ready to let go of the past? Are you ready to let go of what your family passed on to you? That's all you know. Broken relationships, angry, fighting, throwing things, calling the popo. It's crazy stuff. Right? It's time to end it. Got to end it with you. I had to end it with me. My dad was an abuser. He'd beat my mom, punch her in the face, put guns to her head, threaten her, kick her, go out on her, anger. I said, man, is that going to be me? And you know what I found out? I was becoming just like my dad. He was passing it on to me. I remember when I was going out with Lisa. She, she threatened to call the police on me because I was so jealous. I started asking her questions, and if I didn't like her answer, I was like, you're lying. It's not true. And I get angry and angry, and one day, she just she had a screen door in her house, and she goes, Marco, if you don't calm down, I'm calling the police. I said, Pastor, really? Yeah. I was a youth pastor. This wasn't like I was out there gang banging. No one knew. But I realized, man, I got an issue. I got to change how I do relationships. I'm being just like my daddy. And I have to ask God forgiveness and God forgive me. I can't do relationships like this. I'll kill her. And I asked God forgiveness, and he forgave me. I forgave myself. And God says, don't ever go back to that again. Don't ever ask another jealous question again. Be done with that. You're done with that. He goes, if you go back and ask another jealous question, all those demons will come back. He goes, that's my daughter. I forgave her. She's a new person. You're not going to hold her past against her. She's a woman of God. And if I forgave her, you got to forgive her. Okay? I know, I know we're going over a little bit, but church, we don't want to be a church that's in and out and we don't get breakthrough. Come on, we're here to get some breakthrough, something that lasts. Come on, how many know we need, we need the Holy Spirit? We need to allow the Spirit to right now rest on souls. Okay. We're going to pray. And God's not hard of hearing. He's not saying, do you mean it? Do you not mean it? He's like, He's at the edge of his seat because he's a perfect listener. I don't want to miss a word. I don't want, just speak to me. Come on, I've been waiting for this moment. Speak to me. I, I, you're the most valuable thing I got. All I want is a relationship with you. It pains me to see the depression, the pain of what you're doing. It pains me to see you separated from me. I want a relationship with you. You come the way you are. You become a son and daughter of God. You know what that means? You become like a baby again. Teach me. I want to grow. I want to learn. I start today. What do you expect of a baby? Just drink some milk. We'll change your diapers. We're good. Amen. Come on. No, no big expectation. Just follow Jesus. Show up to the church. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Repeat after me. Say, say Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord, for hurting you, for hurting others, for hurting the ones I love. And I forgive everyone that hurt me too. I let it go right now. I receive forgiveness and I give forgiveness. I know that the price that was paid for the wrong I've done 
was Jesus suffering and dying on a cross for my sins so I could be forgiven. After Jesus was buried, he rose from the dead. That's me. I'm rising up to be a new person right now as I place my faith in you, Jesus. Save me. Set me free. Depression, worry, fear, addiction, go. I'm serving Jesus. Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. And I put my relationships in your hands. Use me, Lord, to love the people that you've put in my life. I don't want to hurt them anymore. I'll do my part, and you'll do your part, and you'll restore it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. I want to let you know we love you.